Happy New Year, everyone, and welcome back to the GCN Racing News Show. This week, I'll be looking back at a packed period of cyclocross racing, which has been almost completely dominated by Wout van Aert and Lucinda Brandt for the last couple of weeks. We've also got more new 2022 World Tour team kits, including a beautiful design from FDJ Nouvelle Aquitaine Futuroscope and one from Andy Schleck Cycles that the UCI have banned. First up, cyclocross, and in the men's, the return of Wout van Aert has basically left everybody else fighting for second place. Since his cyclocross season debut on the 4th of December in Bohm, which he won, he's gone on to win two rounds of the World Cup, two rounds of the X2O Bad Comers Trophy, one round of the Super Prestige, and one round of the Ethius Cross. So, as of yesterday morning, seven starts, seven wins for the Belgian superstar. But that's not unusual or a surprise. Van Aert, after all, has been at the top of the cyclocross game for years now. He and Mathieu van der Poel have been head and shoulders above the rest on the men's side, which is why the slightly later return of Mathieu van der Poel was so hotly anticipated. His debut, delayed due to a knee injury sustained in training, was at the World Cup in Dendermonde on Boxing Day. Now, he had a lot of ground to make up, having been gridded near the back, but he made most of that up by the end of the starting straight. However, after going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Van Aert for a while, Van Aert's power and fitness shone through, leaving Van der Poel to set up a second place. And it was a similar scenario the day after at the Super Prestige, only this time Van der Poel abandoned. And that might be the last that we see from him for a while. The back injury, which prevented him from racing on the road for a couple of months after the Olympics this year, has resurfaced. And as things stand, there's no confirmation as to when he will return, with his team simply saying they'll just wait until he is free from back pain. So that leaves Van Aert's closest current competitor as Tom Pidcock, who finished a reasonably close second to him at the Grand Prix Sven Nace on New Year's Day. The 10 seconds between them by the finish was Van Aert's smallest winning margin so far this season, although a lot of that was down to the need to change one of his shoes, which left him on the back foot, if you'll pardon the pun. The only thing that can possibly stop Van Aert at the moment, it seems, is some sort of crash or mechanical, and that's exactly what happened to him yesterday at the World Cup in Ulst. A first lap chain problem left him over 30 places and 44 seconds to make up over the front runners, and it proved too tough a hurdle even for him to overcome. Taking advantage of that, at the head of affairs was British champion Tom Pidcock, who had a slender advantage over Ellie Isabet for much of the race. And I've got to say it was an intense chase the whole way for the Belgian, but he wouldn't quite be able to get back up to the wheel of Pidcock, who took his second elite cyclocross World Cup win. In finishing second though, Isabet had done enough to seal the overall World Cup series with two rounds still remaining, and that should allow him to prepare more optimally for the World Championships, which come at the end of this month. In the women's racing, the recent races have been equally dominated by Lucinda Brandt, potentially even more so because she's won her last six races on the trot with 15 wins and 22 starts so far this season, and only twice in that time has she been off the podium. However, with Mariana Voss building her form back up and towards the World Championships in Fayetteville at the end of the month, Brandt might not have it all her own way in the coming weeks. Then again, the biggest challenge to her may come from the youngsters, I guess depending on what category they choose to ride in the fight for the rainbow jersey. And I say that because 19-year-old Puck Pizza laid down some fearsomely quick laps on the old circuit in the Netherlands yesterday at the World Cup, opening up a handsome advantage over the rest. However, Brandt's strength and endurance once again prevailed. She caught her young compatriot on the penultimate lap and powered away on the final one to take yet another win. And in doing so, she extended her lead in the World Cup series. Her advantage is now 59 points over Denise Betzema, with those two rounds still remaining. I'm going to move on now to what we've got coming up on GCN Plus this week. So on Wednesday, it's the next round of the X2O Bad Comers Trophy, which takes place in Herentau. And then on Sunday, it's National Champions Day, and we have two of them live for you over on GCN Plus. I've got the British one, which has the English commentary, and then the French National Championships, which will have only French commentary. It's also now just three weeks until the first road races of the season. So we're gonna have highlights of the Challenge Mallorca starting on the 26th of January, and then live coverage of the Grand Prix Marseillais, the Vuelta a San Juan, the Saudi Tour, and the Vuelta a la Comunitat Valenciana starting soon after that. Now there are a couple of territory restrictions on those, but most of them will be available in all GCN Plus territories. So there'll be plenty for all of you to watch right from the beginning of the season. Don't forget, we've also got the World Cyclocross Championships at the end of January in Fayetteville, which we will have live in the USA and throughout Europe, except for Denmark, Norway, Sweden, Italy and Belgium. That is going to be a big one that you do not want to miss. 
Here's hoping though, that all of those races do go ahead as planned. And I say that because yesterday I read a rumor from the Gazeta della Sport that the Vuelta San Juan is going to be canceled again this year. It was there that Sagan, Viviani and Ghana, amongst others, were due to start their 2022 season. In other news, there have been a raft of new kit released over the last couple of weeks. And the first one we'll look at is Team SD Works. I'm a big fan of this one. Bright, but not too messy. And something that really should stand out from the crowd. Or so you'd think. Unfortunately, three other teams have registered near identical team kits, something that was picked up by a few people, including the website Cycling Tips. So those other teams are the new UAE team ADQ, Human Powered Health, which used to be known as Rally Cycling, and the Andy Schleck Cycles team. Now the UCI have since intervened, forbidding Andy Schleck Cycles from using their design this year, despite the fact that as the team itself pointed out on social media, they are the only one of the four not to have changed their colours versus last year and had this design before any Anybody else. And that does seem rather unfair, doesn't it? You've got to have a degree of sympathy for them there. Anyway, with the kit already manufactured, Andy Slick Cycles were forced to try and sell it all online in order to recoup some of their losses. And it was very popular, it seemed, because it's already sold out. Moving on, and Primoz Roglic was not only showing off his new kit before Christmas, but also a new contract. His previous agreement with Jumbo Visma, which was to the end of 2023, has now been extended to the end of 2025, at which point he'll be 36 years old. Anyway, this is the new Jumbo Visma kit. Not a huge departure from their 2021 design, so it will be familiar to most of us this year. Sam Bennett has been showing off his new Bora Hansgrohe team kit, which retains the same dark green colour with a few more block shades this year, and an extra red panel thrown in on the lower part of the jersey and the shorts. Meanwhile, the team that he left at the end of last year, now known as Quickstep Alpha Vinyl, have updated their design. The blue, as ever, is still there. There's a bit more white on the sleeves and flashes of pink thrown in there too. It is a smart design and also marks their departure away from Vermark clothing after a partnership of close to 20 years. They're now going on to Castelli, who've moved over from Team Ineos. However, I have saved what I think is the best new kit, so far at least, for last. FDJ Nouveau Aquitaine Futuroscope. Now, it's not dissimilar in design to the Quickstep Alpha Vinyl kit, but it's just so crisp, clean and sharp. Black shorts, a blue body with red accents and white sleeves. Well played, FDJ. And incidentally, if you're wondering why it looks quite different to the men's group Armour FDJ team, it's because they're entirely different entities who only share one of the sponsors, something I only learnt last year. Anyway, I've cast my judgement, but as you all well know, I don't have many qualifications when it comes to judging fashion, so it'll be you who decide the best and worst kit of 2022. Once they've all been made public, we'll be having a big vote over on the GSIN app where you'll get to have your say. In other news, our thoughts are very much of Amy Peters and her friends and family at the moment. Unfortunately, Amy was involved in a serious crash in Alicante in Spain just over a week ago, where she was training with the Dutch National Track Squad. Doctors have had to place her in an induced coma, and the latest update as we record this came from her team SD Works on the 27th of December. Then a decision had been made to keep her in an induced coma for at least three more days. Floods of messages have been shared on social media and an emotional Lucinda Brand dedicated her win at the Grand Prix Sven Nace to Amy. Goes without saying, but we wish her all the best and sincerely hope to hear some good news very soon. Uh, just before I finish for this week though, a couple of rides have announced their retirements over the holiday period. Frenchman Damien Godin, an absolute beast on a bike on his day, is one of those. He dreamt of one day winning Paris-Roubaix after finishing fifth there in 2013. And although that never quite happened, he did win Trobro Lyon, a stage of Paris-Nice and two stages of the Tour of Luxembourg over what was a 14-year career. Another rider is Raphael Vals, which came as a bit of a surprise as he had agreed a contract extension with Bahrain Victorious into this year. However, after a spate of crashes over the last couple of years, the Spaniard said that his head was no longer really in it. Which is fair enough. It's a dangerous sport with a lot of pressure and a lot of suffering too. Vals took four pro victories in his career, including the Tour of Oman overall in 2015, but spent most of his time helping other riders in his teams. Right, that is all for this week, but I'll be back next week with a roundup of the new cyclocross national champions. I'll see you then, but goodbye for now.